What new habits do you have? What new habits are you implementing every day? That's number one. What are you doing every day? Are you doing the same thing that you used to do a year when things weren't as productive? Are you doing different things? Are you making the necessary investments? Do you have a coach that has been where you're looking to go and are guided and can guide you there? Or are you trying to figure it out on your own? If you're like, well, I'm going to just figure it out on my own, then that shows that you're not on track. Because people who create that separation don't try to figure things out on their own because they understand that time is more valuable than money. So they'll figure out how to get the necessary money to make the necessary investments to buy them time. So are you trying to figure it out on your own or do you got a guy that'll get you there? Empower You podcast is devoted to bringing real world wisdom and encouragement to our listeners, fans, subscribers, and friends. We talk about a multitude of life principles and the process from an economic, societal, and cultural perspective. We believe that in tough conversations and shared wisdom, we can pave the path and leave a ladder for the future. So subscribe to our channel, rate, review, and let us empower you. Welcome to Empower You Podcast. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Kidboy Cooper. I'm super excited for you all to join us today. Um, our interview today is super special um, and you're going to absolutely love it. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today is attracting abundance. Um, in this series, we've been going over a lot of the principles of uh, empowered investments, right? We're learning about what investments are and how we embody those investments, how we uh, uh, internalize a lifestyle that uh, creates what we want. And so... Um, in today's topic, we're talking about attracting abundance, and I have an, an absolutely incredible uh, master of attraction uh, here with us today. So today, our guest is a speaker, an author, a coach's coach. Uh, he is the secret weapon of the e-commerce industry. He's a husband, a father, a dear friend and mentor to a lot of folks, uh, the king of client attraction, the billionaire brother, uh, Dr. Markwell Russell. How we doing, man? I'm doing amazing, man. Life's good, man. I can't complain, man. How about you? I'm great, bro. I'm great. I'm great. I, I appreciate you so much for taking a moment of your time, man. I know uh, you got a lot of stuff going on, man. And uh, you've built an sure. incredible organization that has been um, so instrumental, not only in my life, um, but in the lives of so many others. And if any of you all have heard Empower You Podcast, y'all have heard me talk about Mark Well and different comments or quotes that he's made, things that have just really helped me unlock um, a lot of my own potential. And so I'm super excited that you're here to share right from the goat's mouth with us. So Thank tell you, us bro. a little bit about yourself, man. So um, I'm, a, I'm a lifelong entrepreneur. Um, Mark Will Russell, as Kidway said, um, I just love entrepreneurship, man. I, I am a, I call myself an entrepreneur supremacist. I believe that <laughs> entrepreneurs are the lifeblood of the economy. Like all the jobs, all the, in, everything is based from entrepreneurship. Right. So it's like if you it's like a lot of politicians say things like, well, I'm going to create more jobs if you vote me. Well, politicians don't create jobs. Entrepreneurs create jobs. So the, the entrepreneurs are the visionaries. We're on this stream right now because of some entrepreneurial mind that created this. So I love that. Obviously, I'm a, I'm a husband, a father, a man of God, I, um, a God. Uh, yeah, man, I just love what I do. I'm living in a great place. Love what I do. Get to wake up every day and do what I love. So, um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm extremely blessed, man. That's awesome, bro. Dro and the cool thing is, like, I dropped out of high school in 10th grade. So I got a ninth grade education. Um, so I, I was going the route that typical brothers from where I'm from go, you know, selling drugs at a young age, start getting, going back and forth to jail. Had my son when I was 19, and I was in jail. Um, and by the grace of God, I was able to turn things around after a lot of hard lessons. And to date, we've helped our clients to over a billion dollars in revenue. So, and we just getting warmed up. So, that's yeah. wild, man. That's wild, bro. 
um mm-hmm. it, there's there's so much in that in just what you just said you know that is so true as far as like understanding that you are the the creator of your own life you know you mm-hmm. are at the helm you can't expect politicians or legislation or any of these other outside forces or even your church necessarily you know to mm-hmm. do for you what you have the power to do for yourself because you right. are the one with that authority so i think that's just that's incredible man our 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 topic is you know attracting abundance and obviously you know you're the clean, king of client attraction so i wanted to ask you a couple of things about just that process right um because I obviously I followed uh, uh, your your social media. I've spoken with you several times in person. I've listened to you speak, um, and there's certain things that you have said over the course of my time knowing you that have just been really interesting to me. And yeah. some of the things you talk about um, is how just sowing seeds, just engaging in certain activities, you know, whether it is teaching people or doing outreach or or uh, allows you to attract a certain amount of not only success, but just abundance. And I mean that in all of the terms. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so the first thing I want to ask you is what is the first thing you think of when you hear the word abundance? So when I hear the word abundance, I here immediate is like more than enough overflow right not not just overflow but like so it's a scripture that says that press down shaking up still overflow so it's like it's a jar right here so if i was to stuff this with money right so one of the things i do is every time i go to a different country we collect money from these different countries so it's not enough to fill this jar up yet but i could fill this up probably if i press it in right but let's say I put all of this in here and it filled the jar just with this little bit. But I can still press it even more with more. Get pressed and pressed it, and then even press it down, right? And you want to get it to the point where it's pressed all the way down where nothing else can be put in here and it's flowing over, right? So that's that's what I see as abundance. Hmm. That's, that's a great visual too, bro. That's mm-hmm. a great visual. Um, what was your first experience with abundance? Was it good or bad? Because I think, you know, abundance can go both ways, depending on your lifestyle, depending on stuff that's going on around you. So in your in your life, you know, what was your first experience with abundance? So it's a great question, Kid Way, man. I think I think one thing is that I think what we really have to ask ourselves, right, is like, what was our because I, I hear that question two different ways. So I hear the question that you're asking. So let me answer that. Let me answer the question. So my first experience of abundance i think we all had it is like when we were born <sighs> but we weren't conscious of it though like think about <laughs> okay. think about it think about okay. it okay okay when we're born and we come out the womb we're this little ball of abundance right with no limitations and no area an abundance of opportunity you're able to take in all the different senses you literally have no limitations. So I think that was my first experience of abundance, but because I, w- I wasn't really aware of it. And as you grow up and you start taking in the limitations of our parents and people around us, we start taking on lack. Mm. But in reality, we really lack nothing at any time. So we're always in a place and state of abundance. Right. But many times we've been forced to forced to focus on lack, especially with the media and things of that nature, marketing and advertising, because most marketing and advertising, you know, I'm a marketing advertising guy. But but a lot of it comes from a standpoint of showing people what they lack, quote unquote, and then leveraging that. So it's like so now it's like especially in our culture, it's like everybody got to have bigger and better. So it's like. Well, yeah, you got a nice watch, but you don't got this one, so you're not in abundance. Or yeah, you got a car, a nice car, but you don't got this one, so you're actually not in abundance. But are you really not in abundance? Are you really not in abundance because you don't have these specific material things? So we, we're taught that stuff, but we're all like infinite beings, yeah. right? And we're infinite beings from birth, but we're, 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 we're taught lack, 
Does it does it answer your question, bro? Yeah, that does. I don't know if that's the right. I don't know if that's where you wanted me to go, but no, no. I think that's I think that's great. I think you know I think that's a great perspective because just like you said, our our earliest form is a form of abundance and a, yep. of limitless potential. You know, yep. and then over time we learn the negative aspects of abundance that there could be a mm -hmm. lot of problems that there can be a lot of doubts but we get mm -hmm. that from external sources they don't come from within us yep i think that's that's a really really good i'm idea. glad you asked me that bro i'm gonna use that topic i'm gonna use that topic with my youth class that i'm gonna do thursday dude do it man do it man sure. I just, that's a great question i so for me growing up you know um and and your answer helps me because it helps reframe even the way that I was thinking about it, because for me, my first, what I would think, what I was thinking earlier is my first understanding of abundance, you know, was just that there can be a lot of difficulty. And so mm -hmm. I'm trying to convert the difficulties that I've experienced into positive abundance, right? Just based off yep. of my lifestyle, investments, all of that kind of stuff. But taking it even back, further back from that to say, you already have this you're just getting back into alignment with who you were before the world got mm -hmm. to you. And can I share this? Yeah. In in the presence of an abundance of difficulties is also a, an abundance of opportunity. For sure. In that same instance, right? Because we live in a world of like duality. Yeah. So it's, it's like these two things are always going on at one time, right? So it's like, it depends on what you decide to focus on. Do you mm -hmm. focus on the, the abundance of what you, what we frame? Because everything only has meanings based on the meaning that we give it, right? So it's like, if we call it a difficulty, then that's what it is. Right. Or we could equally call it an opportunity. So for example, somebody may say, I'm overweight. Well, they can look at this as a difficulty or they can look at this as an opportunity to get in better shape and also improve their self-discipline. Uh, so it depends on like how they view it yeah. and how they name it. Yeah. Because like we're literally, uh, God created us with this dominion and it was like, we can name things. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> I like that. That was good. I hope y'all caught mm -hmm. that. I'm telling you. I hope y'all caught that. You can name what your circumstance is. You don't mm -hmm. have to give it the same name that the world gave mm -hmm. it or your parents gave it or your community mm -hmm. gave it. That's real good. That's real good. So and the next question I have for you, man, is like, you know, you seem like, and from what I've known of you, you know, you've always been very, very self-motivated. Like you're the type of person that get up, gets up and gets it, you know? Yeah. How did you cultivate that, that resilience? Did you have people that you, that you looked up to as a kid? Were there um, influences that you had that taught you to stick it out? You know, because at this stage in your life, you can see backwards so much more clearly. So what do you see yeah. about yourself looking backward? So I think for me, man, why so I came up from I came up from nothing, bro. So it was like I always wanted more. So like a lot of people don't know, and I don't talk about it a lot, but like the first part of my life up until third grade, my aunt raised me. And my aunt was, for the lack of a better term, a crackhead, right? Uh, she smoked crack, she was a functional though. So it was like we had, we, you know, she took care of us. We weren't like living on the streets or nothing. Um, but that's kind of what I grew up around. Like I, I, her friends used to come over and they used to go and, you know, smoke and all that. So I knew the smelling. I knew what crack smelled like burning at a young age. Mm. You see what I'm saying? I still yeah. know what it smells like because I, I know the smell from when I was young. So, I, yeah. so I grew up in that environment. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I grew up and with Payless shoes and I grew up with, um, are you, you you're not in the military, you're not ex military, are you? Keep me, um, no, sir. Um, keep away? No, sir. So, all right, in, in mil do you know anybody ex military or anything like that? I got some people in my family, but. So, in the military, right, they have this thing called MREs. Yeah, I know what those are. You familiar with MRE is? Yes, sir. So, my aunt's husband was in Desert Storm when I was growing up. Okay. Right? So, he used to send back MREs, boxes of them. And many days for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, I ate MREs. Wow. Right? 
Yeah. So like these, they're real, they're vacuum. They're like, it's like, for people who don't know, it's like vacuum sealed food. MREs are called meals ready to eat. So when they go out, so when these when the military officers and they go out in the field, they have these MREs in their backpack and they're vacuum sealed. So they just cut them open, I guess, and then eat, whether it's graham crackers or mac and cheese or whatever is in there, right? So I grew up in that environment. So I always wanted more. So, and I always was like very observative, right? So even now, a lot of people see me speak on stages and on videos and podcasts and they're like, oh, he's a super extrovert. He talks, it's like, nah, if you ever meet me in person, yeah. It kind of you will notice, and you have. Yeah, uh, I'm more observant. If I'm not talking or nothing like that, I'm observing, and I just always been observative, and I always saw that there was an opportunity for more, right? So even as I grew up, and um, the ideal job where I'm from is like to get a job working for the city. Like you work for the city, things of that nature. You know, make X Y Z. But I was like, I ain't want that. I always wanted more. The people who I knew who were selling drugs was having the most money. Those are the influential people where I grew up. And they had money. So that's the path I went. Because again, I wanted more. I was like just every, like every young black dude. I wanted to go to the NBA. I wanted to go to the NFL. But people always said, well, I have something to fall back on. So that was that lack. That was an example of that lack. People putting that lack and their limited beliefs on me. Like, have something to fall back on. So I'm like, okay. So then I, the people start saying, well, you know, only X percent go to the NBA or only X percent go. So that's that lack. That was a limited beliefs putting on us, right? So I went into the streets. So I said on drugs because again, I wanted more. So I always kind of had that. Um, I think some of it was probably genetic because my mom was a, was a hustler as well. My granddad was a hustler as well. So they always had that. So I think it was, some of that was DNA also, but also just that, desire for more and then to set my family up where they didn't have to go through you know what i what i had to go through mm, that's good man that's and now good, and now man. it's even bigger than just me and my family but now it's about how many other families can i help put into position to for their family not have to do that right specifically in the black community because it's like now we can do that imagine how much wealth we can create help for create for the black community and then what opportunities is that correct? I'm gonna give you an example, bro. So yeah, the other day, um, Dr. Uye, he owns this company called Bonza. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with that stuff. You familiar with Dr. Uye? Yeah. So, so Dr. Uye, he was like, Harvard has a $43 billion endowment, Harvard. So he showed me a list. Guess how many HBCUs have a, at least a billion dollar endowment? Maybe two? Zero. Zero. Wow. The biggest HBCU endowment is $787 million. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little sad. Right. And, it, and it's not least. because we don't have the wealth to contribute to it. It's just, right. we're just not intentional about it. Yeah. However, the more wealth that we can create, the more opportunities we can create, the more jobs we can create, the more this we can create. And we don't, the, we, now we can put our own politicians in office. Correct. Right? Because Absolutely. money drives politics. We can put our own people in office. We can do certain things because we make these six of power moves. So now it's not so much about how do I get Mark Quill and his family in a better situation, but it's like, how do we get millions of other families in better situations as well, based on what I've learned and can share with other people? Man, that's huge, bro. That's huge. How does that feel on a daily basis carrying that around, bro? No, it's exciting. I mean, it's, it's exciting. I get up and do it. I get up, get to get up and get to do what I love every day. So it's it's very exciting. That's good. That's good, man. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to go to a different level. Um, so throughout all of this, you know, this journey that you've had, you know, a lot of people. No, I'm gonna make it more personal. One of the things you told me was that at a certain point in your life, and especially in your journey as a business owner, you have to just become confident in the fact that you will bounce back from anything that happens. Yeah. And the more confidence you move in that direction, the more things will work out the way you want them to because you're just not worried so much. You're not constantly yeah. absorbed with the what if it don't. Yeah. And so 
what I want to ask you is, you know, what's been the worst moment for you on this journey and how did you bounce back from it? On what journey? On your journey? journey? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got it. All right, cool. So, so, so you mentioned being able to overcome anything, right? So, so I think, so that's, that's the core of entrepreneurship, right? Understanding that whatever happens come up, whatever does come up, you'll be able to deal with. That's entrepreneurship, right? And I'm, so and another thing, I was just in Miami for this mastermind. And I was talking to his brother named Beyond, Beyond when he's in the real estate space. And he was basically like, he was like, basically like, our people don't understand that God created us with this thing in us that we're problem solvers at our core. That's all we've ever done. Right, slavery, even prior to slavery, that's all we've ever building pyramids. Like that's all we've ever done. Like we're problem solvers. So he says, people ask him, "What if wholesaling goes away? What if this goes away?" He's like, "Well, if it does goes away, it don't matter because God already created with me with the solution for the problem. It don't matter what it is." So, so really understanding that is very, very critical. Now to answer your question, my biggest challenge on this entrepreneurial journey is probably me understanding that who I was um, is really understanding the personal development piece. So like a lot of people, let's say for example, they want to make a million dollars a year. If they, they're not going to make a million dollars, if they've only made $50,000 a year, they're not going to make a million dollars a year as the person they are right now that makes $50,000 a year. They have to become an entirely different person. Not meaning they got to start acting funny or that type of thing, but internally, mentally, they have to become a whole new person. So it's kind of like a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. Like you literally have to go through an entirely entire metamorphosis, right? Which can be painful. So think about it. So a a caterpillar, when they're a caterpillar, at some point, before they go through this metamorphosis, they got to go through what? What they typically go? A cocoon, right? Isn't that what it is? Yeah. So when they're in a cocoon, they're what? They're like mutating. Yeah, and they're like closed off, right? Yeah. A lot of people aren't willing to go through that closed off process. (laughs) A lot of people aren't willing to go through that closed off process because they got to be around people. Uh, but however, if you if you like going if you like going through this if you like going through this transition, you, there's going to be a point where you're closed off because you got to go through this this transformation, and a lot of people ain't going to be there. They're not going to be there for the transformation because they're going to be okay with where they are, but it has to be some separation, right? So, for yeah. example, so I talk to you know I do a lot of work with youth, so it's like okay. As you're leveling up, let's let's use for entrepreneurs. As you're leveling up, what's the difference in people who make a hundred thousand dollars a year and people make a million dollars a year? Is people create separation? So, like, if you're looking to go to the NBA, only less than one percent go. What's the difference? The ones that go create separation. Most of them, most people, are, they're outside hooping at five p.m. after school. The ones that create the separation, they up at five a.m. It's a difference, right? Some out partying, some go to college and they're partying every night. Why the some out partying, some out training. Kobe Bryant, when they used to, they could win a game, and everybody go out and party. Kobe be like, "Nah, I'm chilling. I'm going. I'm going to hoop." They're like, "We just won, bro. What you mean?" He's like, "No, nah, we got to get better. I'm looking film. I'm looking at how we get better next time, right? Or well, if I go up with y'all tonight, y'all gonna have to get up with me and train early in the morning. But it's about creating that separation. Most people ain't willing to create that separation. Most people ain't willing to go through that cocoon." Because they're thinking about what are people going to say about them? How are people are going to judge them? They got to be around people. They aren't even comfortable being alone by themselves, being with their own thoughts. They got to be around people and noise. But if you go on, go through that, which is challenging to answer your question, it's like going through that process. So I had to go through that process because I come from an entirely different world. So I had to go through that process. Not me and I cut people off and told people I ain't dealing with them no more. They ain't knowing what I'm on. None of that. I just kind of went through my own thing and I was just cut off from a lot of people 
not not I didn't cut them off. I just went through a thing which automatically cut me off from a lot of people. Especially as I was going through that transition. And then when I started to come back out, people was like, hey, what is what is this? Because now I was in this butterfly phase. But they were, but some people still remember me as a caterpillar. <laughs> Y'all, this is this is this is so good. Um I wanna I wanna I wanna you drop so many gems, man. I'm gonna just try to pick up one or two and, and, okay. and try to expound on them. Okay. One of the things that you said was the cocoon phase. Mm-hmm. I want you to tell me for a listener who is um who's listening, who's just trying to figure out what phase they're in, right? Maybe they mm-hmm. even started something or they're anticipating starting something like, how do I know I'm on the road to becoming the type of person who does, you know, 50,000 a month or who does a million a year? Or how do I know I'm on that level? What does that, what are some signs of this type of constructive separation? Not just going out, cutting everybody off and deleting everybody out your phone, being rude, but some mm-hmm. signs that I'm starting to ascend and maybe not materially in my material world but on the inside mm-hmm. got it so i would say are you do you have different what what new habits do you have what new habits are you implementing every day that's number one what are you doing every day are you doing the same thing that you used to do a year when things weren't as productive are you doing different things are you making the necessary investments do you have a coach that has been where you're looking to go and are guide and can guide you there? Or are you trying to figure it out on your own? If you're like, well, I'm gonna just figure it out on my own, then that shows that you're not on track. Because mm-hmm. people who create that separation don't try to figure things out on their own because they understand that time is more valuable than money. So they'll figure out how to get the necessary money to make the necessary investments to buy them time. So are you trying to figure it out on your own or do you got a guide that'll get you there? Have you made the commitment that you're going to persist until you succeed? Or do you have a plan B? Right? Do I, well, do you got a plan B if this don't work out? If you got a plan B, you're not on track because you're just one foot in. You ain't all in. So, like, for example, when I came into this whole world, I was still in the streets. I wasn't all in. I wasn't all in. I was still in the streets at the same time while trying to figure this online stuff out. I wasn't all in. I had to go all in end up losing everything. Another question, have you lost everything? Oh. Right? Sometimes, <laughs> some, sometimes you gotta be stripped all the way down then built all the way back up. Like I had to be stripped all the way down and built back up. Like I'm talking about down to the studs. Like I went from, I, I lost every, I ain't have my, my girl, my wife now, she just had to pay the bills, rent, I mean, uh, gas, give me a little allowance for my bartender tips. Right, all that. So it's like I had to be stripped down. So sometimes that's a rites of passage. Oh my God. Oh, they not <laughs> listen. This is good, man. Because I think this is the kind of stuff that we don't really think about. You know, we, we have all these top, we have all these conversations around building wealth, about becoming the person you want to be. You gotta become this person. It's like, well, what does that look like? What does that look like? And man. and and what you just said makes so much sense. It, it comes down to your habits, whether you are investing in, in, in the actual process, you know, mm-hmm. how committed you are and how much you have lost or how much you're willing to lose yep. until you get where you're trying to go. Bingo. Because here's the cool thing. What you will find out where you're trying to go isn't even the important piece. Because once you get to where you're trying to go, it ain't even what you think it is. Mm-hmm. The game is really in the process. <laughs> so my boy, my boy Justin said this the other day, so powerful. He was basically, I saw it in a video, and he was like, the man that loves walking more than the man who in, she's folk, who loves the destination is the man that gets there fast, or is the man who enjoys, or some along those lines. But he was like, but basically, you got to enjoy walking versus the destination. Because when you get to the, whether it's hundred thousand dollars a month, million dollars a month, whatever, when you get to that point, it ain't gonna be what you think it is anyway. So now you worked yourself. Success is always on the horizon. So once you hit the million dollar a month, let's just say that's the thing. You hit that. Now you're like, 
Thank you for listening to Empower You Podcast. I just wanted to take a second and tell you about a brand new podcast on the Creative Podcast Network. The Guru Guide to Podcasting podcast is for coaches, consultants, service-based businesses that are looking to beat the social media algorithms, uh, create more revenue in their business and an audience of their ideal clients so that they can have more valuable conversations, impact more businesses, more clients, and ultimately create more income and more free freedom in their business. So if that's you and you're looking to build an audience of your ideal clients, you're looking to take back your time in your business, in your life, and uh, generate more income while doing it, you can start your very own profitable business podcast and we'll show you exactly how to do it. So click the link and visit the Guru Guide to Podcasting podcast and we'll talk to you when you get there. Okay, back to the episode. All right. Well, how do I get the two million? How do I get the five million? Right. So it's like you don't even really celebrate most people because it's always on the horizon. It's always a moving target. So what you will realize looking back is that all the game was like actually in the process. That's why you you know how we do in seven Figure society. It's like, hey, every quarter you got to do some kind of getaway. Why? Because number one, you need to refresh and recharge and unplug. Number two, that helps you start to enjoy the process. Right, you're you're enjoying some of the fruits now instead of waiting until. Sheesh. Oh my goodness. This is <laughs> heavy, y'all. This is some of y'all gonna have to play this black back. I'm definitely gonna play it back. Mm-hmm. Um man, so much of what you're saying is so good, man. Um so here's another question. Cause I could go on about this particular question for a long time, because there's so many facets to it. But um before a year before your biggest breakthrough, what were you reading? What were you thinking about? What were your habits? Like, because you said this, um, you said generally a lot of people who do really well mm-hmm. already had those habits a year before. Yeah. And then later, all this other stuff on a material level starts to come to fruition, right? That abundance mm-hmm. starts to to come out of their life, right? So a year before your big breakthrough, right? Whether it was $10,000 a month or whatever that was that kind of snowballed into what Client Attraction University is now, um, what were you doing a year before that? If you can remember, I know, you know, y'all done had a lot of wins since then. Right, so so it really depends, man, on what you, what you call a big breakthrough. Okay. Right? So it really depends. So um, what would, what would you consider a big breakthrough? I would consider a big breakthrough uh, a moment where you realized on a material level that all the things you've been doing in private were the right things. Because, And I'll just say for myself, sometimes I'll have different habits or routines and things like that. I'm like, I mean, I feel better, but I don't know if this is really yeah. working. You know what I mean? I'm feeling makes good. Makes sense. So I'd probably say one notable thing um, was when I was able to tell my wife that she would, would she wouldn't, I don't think we were even married yet, that she didn't have to go to work anymore because the online stuff was like taken care of. So that was a big one. So some of the habits that I was having was I'm um, working out, um, doing some meditation here and there, um, I'm gonna tell you something. So I'm gonna tell you something crazy, bro. It's crazy you asked me that. <laughs> so, so I, so if you see this, for those who see in the video, this is a whiteboard. I don't know if you can see it because of the glare on my light. But basically, so this is a whiteboard. This is probably from, man, this is probably from Tim Michael Russell. So, uh, so it's so long ago it's not even coming up. So let's call it. So this I was I did a podcast about five years ago. Let me let me try it this way. This might work. This might work. Hold on, let me try it. So because I want to give you some reference because I think that's gonna be super helpful. Everybody listening. All right. So let's go here. All right. So I found I just found this graphic. I don't even, I don't think this domain is up anymore, but let me see. Let me try it just in case. Okay, so that came up. All right, perfect. So I was doing this podcast called I Love Entrepreneurship. 
um, 2015. Oh, wow. What is it now? 2022. 2022. So seven years ago. I wish you could see my screen. You can't see my screen, but this will trip you out. <laughs> so, so this will trip you out, bro. So, this seven years ago, uh, Kid Wayne. So, this is from then. Seven years ago. So, this is what I used to do. This was my habits you asked me about. I used to vlog Monday through Thursday. This one vlogging was the thing, creating a video blog, yeah, right? Yeah. Monday through Thursday. So I had production goals and I had personal growth goals. Most people got product. Most people don't even got production goals. They just got a goal. They just want to make ten thousand a month. Yeah. They don't got any production thing. You notice there ain't no number on here. Yeah. But the production goals is what helps drive the number. It's like in marketing, you got lead indicators, you got lag indicators. These are the lead indicators that leads to the goal. So I vlog Monday through Thursday. I emailed my list daily. This seven years ago, you already know how I'm about emailing your list daily still to this yes, day. Yes, so I did, on Mondays, I recorded seven I Love Entrepreneurship interviews. So every Monday, I recorded seven podcast interviews. Every Monday. That was my day was focused on interviewing seven interviews. I would release one I Love Entrepreneurship podcast daily. I posted my Facebook three to five times a day. I went on Instagram. I posted to Facebook three, times, three to five times a day. I did a weekly ISU members only webinar. So we had a membership. You heard me talk about the Infinite Success University membership before. Yeah. $9.97 a month. Every Monday I did a call with just them teaching them something. On weekly, I did a, on Thursdays, I did, a, I did a public one to sell people into it. I created a Facebook ad to promote the Thursday webinar. I created a Facebook ad to promote the Thursday replay. So we do the webinar and I promote the replay. I start five to 10 new conversations with home because I was focused on home business owners at this point, like network marketers. Yeah. So I would start five to 10 new conversations with home business owners Monday through Thursday. At this point, this one I decided that I only work Monday through Thursday. So so that's why you keep hearing me say Monday through Thursday. So I start five to 10 new conversations with home business owners Monday through Thursday. I did a, co- I did a coaching sessions Tuesday through Thursday. So I had some one-on-one coaching clients when I was doing one-on-one coaching. And then I would invest 10% minimum of income weekly. I pretty much I was investing back into the business. And then we used to run like a traffic co-op with the clients. Like when we drive traffic, that was my production goals weekly. Personal growth goals was prayer, daily AM and PM, daily meditation at least once per day, daily affirmations and goal statements, 30 minutes of audio and or 10 pages of reading Monday through Friday minimum, at least 30 to 60 minutes of skill set training Monday through Friday, exercise Monday through Friday and journal daily. Pretty much all this I still do. Wow. This this seven this look this seven years ago. Like I I couldn't do it coming off a little bit, but this this seven years ago. Wow. I just got it still I just I came across it when I was clean I was doing something I came across this. I like this crazy. So I just keep it. I just keep it right there. Wow bro. That's most people ain't willing to. Most people ain't gonna do that. Like that. Like most people want to be entrepreneurs. They ain't. They don't want to. They want what it looks like. But they. Yeah. They like. Oh my god, you did all that. Yeah. Most people ain't about that life though. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's some of the benefits of getting stripped down to the studs, right? Mm-hmm. Is understanding mm-hmm. that I'm willing to lose everything for what I believe I'm capable mm-hmm. of. Mm-hmm. And I would rather mm-hmm. lose everything knowing I put it all out there than be sitting around pretending my whole life. You know what I'm yep. saying? That's that's wild, bro. That's wild. Mm-hmm. That's gratifying mm-hmm. too. Uh like mm-hmm. I, I just I just when I Googled this, I just I saw cause Cantus, you I think you met Cantus oh, before. Yeah. He was one of my interviews. I just sent him a picture. So I interviewed him January 30th, 2015 wow. on this podcast. Wow. Yeah. Bro, that's dope. That's dope. <laughs> I gotta I gotta step my game up, bro. I gotta step yeah, my that's... game up. That's that's amazing, man. I, I, I just think it's so the tenacity that it takes to to get where you wanna be and to be the person mm-hmm. who you wanna be. Because the mm-hmm. type of person who gets up and pushes themselves that hard every day. Is, is what you're talking about. You know, you can't yeah. really have all kind of stuff going on if that's your schedule. 
You can't mm-hmm. really have you work, you work you know. in because look at people gotta understand like when you're building something, it's the ultimate faith. Like you're building something that nobody sees but you. Like yeah. I wasn't making a whole bunch of money. If yeah. that, just a little bit here and there. But I was building towards what we're doing now and what we're building towards now. Yeah. Wow, man. So in your opinion, you know, what do you feel like is the biggest misconception about wealth, about joy, about abundance? Uh, What do you feel like is the biggest misconception? I mean, you obviously see what's going on online, you know, but when you're looking at stuff, what's the one thing that you constantly think like, man, these folks, y'all don't get it. I think the biggest biggest misconception is that it's hard or that it's a secret. The reality is Building wealth is a system. Make, make it again, like making money, all that is a system. Most people just don't take the time to get the systems that's required or to develop the skills that's required. Right? It's simple, but you got to know the system of what to follow. Does that make sense? Yeah. Can you can you explain? Can you tell us a little bit about the system? Yeah, for sure. So, for example, that was a so a personal growth plan to grow. That was a system. I wake up, I do this, 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 this. That's the system. Somebody want to get in better shape. Some people just go to the gym and they walk on the treadmill at regular pace. It's like, are you really challenging? Most people go to the gym two, three years. That's all they're going to do the same thing every day. They don't challenge themselves. They don't hire a trainer. They've never lost a hundred pounds. So how would they figure out how to lose a hundred pounds if you don't know how to do it? It's like you. It's a system to actually doing it. Right. To do this. To do this. To do this podcast right now. It's a system. Yeah. So it's like it was a system to get me on the podcast, and then to go live. It was a system that you did behind the scenes. I'm sure you checked audio. You check. You know all all this. You got the music playing. All this was part of a system. And then this was your. So you had a pre-production system you got a production system that we're going through now because you asked some specific questions I'm sure the questions are systemized right in some kind of shape form or fashion Mm -hmm. and then you're going to have a post-production system Mm -hmm. to actually after we're done what do you do with the recording what process do you take it through to actually get it live to other people like Mm -hmm. that's the system most people think like some people think well well, all he doing is just getting on the thing and just recording no it's a whole system. It's the stuff you don't see that make it work. It's like if I, when I turn on my lights, right, in my office, it's like it's a system that actually make these lights work for the light bulb to work. It's like a whole system of how the wires and everything is connected up. So everything is a system. We got to just figure out the system and then implement the system. Yeah, yeah. And and and, then, and be patient in the system, too. You know, yeah. and I think that's, that. you know, and, we, and we've talked, that's been one of my biggest things is because I grew up, wanting more a lot you know mm-hmm. I, I relate to that a lot um it's wanting more 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 but i also was just very impatient because all the different things that we were experiencing or i was experiencing and mm-hmm. so you know part of that you know which is why i think this particular series is so dope is because mm-hmm. even just like you said your personal growth process is a system that you have to Bring continue to invest in the books, invest in the time, invest in the separation in order to make sure that you're on track to becoming what you truly want to be. Um, Thanks. Which is which is just dope, bro. Um, so what piece of advice do you wish you knew sooner? And um, how do you share that with others now? So you said what piece of advice? Say it, say it one more time. What piece of advice do you wish you knew sooner, but that you give to others today? Um, that books and coaching are the cheat code. Mm. Books and hiring coaches are the cheat code. If you want to go further, faster, the way you do it is by finding other people who've done it and then paying them to show you how to do it. Mm. So, so, so trying to yeah. figure it all out and be the smartest person all the time is, that's not. It's a, lo- it's a losing game. Gotcha. It's a losing game. Got you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause you don't, you don't live, you don't live long enough to learn everything on your own. So you find people who've done it, pay them to shortcut it. 
Yeah. That's that's huge, man. I used to uh <laughs> I used to take pride in like doing everything myself. I could do it all, man. I could do this part and that part and this part. I don't I don't need no help. I got it, you know. That's how I made a lot. Mm-hmm. That's how I made money. You know what I mean? It was being this super multifaceted yada 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 yada. And now at this point, I'm like, I just want to do what I'm good at. That's mm-hmm. it. I don't even have the bandwidth to to do all the stuff I feel like I used to do. Mm-hmm. So that's that's really good. So for any of you all who are listening, um, you know, this is Dr. Markwell Russell uh, giving us the 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 gems on how to attract abundance. You know, how to build systems that create abundance in our lives. Um, and how to become the kind of person who uh, is able to do great things in life and who is able to reach their full potential. Um, so, Markwell, you know, how do people who are listening to this podcast, who are thinking about starting entrepreneurship, who are uh, who want to book you as a speaker, who want to speak to you themselves, how do they get a hold of you? Um, what would be the process of engaging with Client Attraction University? Um, tell us a little bit about that. For sure. So one, I would say, um, so we have the, we put the, I got a training called the Paid Ad Playbook, and basically it's a it's a playbook that you can print out and it comes with a video. It shows you how to get fifty to one hundred leads every single day to convert into clients. So if you go to paidadplaybook.com, so that's p a i d ad a d playbook.com, you can get it for free, and it shows you how to get fifty to one hundred leads every single day to convert into clients. So you get it all free. Now, if you if you, if you connect with me on Instagram. Um, and she, my Instagram is just my name, Markwell Russell. Send me, a, send me a message on Instagram and say, hey, I've heard you on Kid Boy's show. I got another bonus gift for you as well for connecting with us. So that's, that's what I recommend. That's dope. That's dope. Truly appreciate you, man. Um, thank you so much my for pleasure, spending man. your time with us. Uh, before we let any of our guests leave, uh, we got to get a thought exercise from you, man. You've given us so much. Um, there's so many things that you've just said that are just incredible um and then so practical i think one of the things that's missing in the self-development world is we we have all these high aspirations and all these cute words and all this you know stuff that exists Mm -hmm. so high up and one of the things that i want to that i endeavor to do with empower you podcast is make everything super practical super Mm -hmm. you know uh uh, super accessible to anybody Mm -hmm. who is listening and so um, I appreciate you taking the time to help us uh, and, and do that. So if you have a thought exercise, something you practice, um, I'm sure you got something up your sleeve. Uh, uh, I would love for you to share any of that with us, brother. So what I would do is, is I would, um, I would, so what I would probably suggest is like sit down and get clear on what is your what does your vision look like three years from now? Like with no limitations, pen to pad, write out your vision three years from now from a personal standpoint, business standpoint, physical, spiritual, lifestyle, emotional. What does that look like? Right? And then begin to read that daily. I got mine on the Evernote. Begin to read that daily as part of what we call a morning success ritual. So read that every day. So get clear on your vision. Right. Write the vision, make it plain, write it and then every morning read it and then start. And then you'll begin to attract the information, the people, all that to help actually make that happen. So that would be my thought exercise to sit down with yourself, take some time, write out your vision, like totally design it three years from now. What else should that envision include? Like where you live, how much you making, what your mama doing? Everything. Like where you live, your, your what your mama do, what your children do, your, your spouse. If you have a spouse, what kind of crib you live in, what kind of fitness you're in, what do you you know, your team? If you have a company, like what time you wake up, what time you go to bed, how often you travel, where do you travel, all that good stuff, everything. Okay, that's good. Okay, y'all. Y'all got a thought exercise from the mm-hmm. Dr. Marquel Russell, who is out here just doing incredible things, man. I, I don't, I don't, you know. I'm sure you know this to an extent, you know. But, um, bro, you, you and Client Attraction University are just y'all are changing the game for for Thank a you. lot of us. And um, 
for somebody like me, like, um, I didn't know who you were about two, three years ago. Mm-hmm. And now I'm just like, can I, I just can't imagine what my life would have been like had I understood or had access to people like yourself. Like, obviously, we, you know, social media has made things more accessible. But for, for mm-hmm. the young people coming up now, the access that they have, you know, it's just like, it's a game changer, what you all are doing mm-hmm. and the systems mm-hmm. that you all are able to put together, the systems that I use that have helped me be successful, the systems that, you know, other co- coaches and clients are using, um, the leadership role that you all are taking with high integrity and client results. All of those are intentional things that make Client Attraction University that make you uh, and, and everybody over there at uh, CAU stand out. Um, Thank and you, that, Thank you. And, and I believe that that integrity um, is what continues to attract that abundance because the, you know, you have all these goals and these systems, but then you do them with the utmost integrity. You treat people the way you want to be treated. You give people opportunities mm-hmm. the way you wanted opportunities. And you let them, you know, people going to live or die by their own hand. But it won't mm-hmm. be because you, you know, scamming people or doing all this other kind of stuff. Because I had a client the other day, and I'm just sharing with this with you because of context. Um, I had a client the other day who was really worried about how people in their space are scamming people. And they were like, mm-hmm. well, I don't want to look like this and I don't want to blah, blah, blah. And I said, are you scamming people? And they said, no. I said, well, then it doesn't matter. As long it, it's it's your job to stand out and be the person actually given the service, even if right. that means you're getting ridiculed or people are, are are doing you know saying stuff about you and all this other kind of stuff. It's a leadership position to be the one doing the right thing, mm-hmm. and it takes a lot of weight to do that, in spite of all the different other stuff you'd be seeing online. And so I appreciate you for for carrying that and then also for sharing that with your team and all of you all carrying that together because it's just incredible so thank you my pleasure man thank you man. thank you i appreciate it thank you thank you all right y'all this is dr marquel russell you can find him on instagram on facebook um, i'll have all the links to any of uh to the play paid ad playbook Make sure you you send him a DM and see uh, about the special gift that he has for you. Because if I know Mark well, he got something super dope for y'all. Uh, he mm-hmm. always has a bag of tricks that he is for ready sure. to, to help and give more value with. So go ahead and slide in that DM and, and, and see what he's talking about. OK. And if you want to book him as a speaker, um, he'll be able to 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 uh, uh, direct you. Uh, just slide in the DMs and see what he's talking about. OK. Thank you so sure. much, Dr. Russell. Anything else you want to leave with us before you go? No, I would say, man, appreciate you, man, for all that you do, man. Keep up the great work. You're doing an amazing work, man. I think this is very powerful what you're doing. This is probably, I do a lot of these podcasts. Follow my favorite, uh, one of my favorites so far. So um, thank you, keep man. going, man. Keep up the great work, man. And I'm super proud of you, bro. Thank you, man. Thank you, brother. All right, y'all. That's it for this one. Uh, we will talk to y'all super soon. Again, click the links in the show notes. Drop a link, a comment, send a rating, a review. Let us know what you think. And we will see y'all in another episode. Peace. Thanks for listening to Empower You Podcast. Don't forget to rate and review this episode because we would love to hear your takeaways from this discussion. And it helps us reach more listeners just like you. If you'd like daily audio video clips from the podcast, you can find Empower You Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you soon.